Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into the area of triangles. Before we get started, I want to first show how we actually came up with the formula for the area for a triangle, and then we'll do several examples on its application. What you're looking at here is a parallelogram. The formula for the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. Now, any parallelogram, you can draw one diagonal going through, one way or the other, that separates it into two congruent triangles. They are congruent because of side, side, side. Therefore, since they're congruent, and if you wanted to find the area of just one of these triangles, like this, then basically what you would do is you would just determine the area of a parallelogram, but then divide your answer by two. So again, the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height, and since the triangle is just simply half that amount, the area is the base times the height divided by two. Or as many people would write it, it would just simply be one half times the base and the height. Okay, so let's try an example. Let's say we were to determine the area of this particular triangle. The steps for doing problems like this are always the same, no matter what kind of shape you use. Step one would be to simply write the appropriate formula. After we do that, then we would go ahead and plug in the correct values for it. The base and the height, you should be looking for the right angle. The base and the height of a triangle always intersect at a right angle. So if you look at those two values that come together right here, that's this side being 12, and this side being 9, we would plug in those two values. Now the only variable we have left is A, the area, so we can go ahead and solve for that by doing the arithmetic here. You can accomplish this by just simply multiplying across the top and then dividing by 2, or reducing here first and then doing your multiplication. Either way gives you the same answer. The units, by the way, is inches squared, and these little ditto marks here mean inches. So remember that for area, it is basically you're determining the number of little squares that are inside the figure, which is why we use the little two to denote that. Okay, how about we try another? Let's determine the area of this yellow triangle. Again, as stated before, first thing you want to do is you'll want to write the formula. Now let's go ahead and plug in our values. The base and the height, recall, meet at a right angle. So your right angle is right here, so your height is going to be 9. However, the base is not going to be this entire thing. The base, the physical base of the yellow triangle is just 12. So it's 9 and 12 that we will plug in again. Though we know that the base and the height do form a right angle, we have to keep in mind that with triangles, it's always with the physical base versus how tall the whole thing is at its highest point. You see, a triangle, no matter how far it is slanted over, whether it's like slanted way over here, or just like this up here, it's always essentially going to be the same height. Thus, the area of these two particular triangles, though they look very different, are actually going to be the same. For example, here's a crude representa uh, representation of that triangle. As you can see, this is five levels high, which means the height of this particular triangle is five. So what if we take these five blocks and we slide them over this way? Well, these are the same five blocks, so we haven't changed the amount of space here that it's occupying. It's still the same height, and again, this is the same length for the base. So because of that, it doesn't really matter how far over that this is slid over from up top. It's still physically the same amount, which is why the area is the same, which is why we only consider just the physical base when calculating, and then just how many levels high is it at its highest point for the height. So going back to this, again, that's the physical base, 12, and then that's the height, 9. Then we go ahead and solve. Okay, let's try another. Let's say we already have the area, and this time we're trying to determine an unknown value that's one of the, part of one of the sides. We started out the same way, in that we would first write out our formula, and then plug in our values. Note that the right angle is right here, so you're talking about this length and this length, where the two 
where, where the uh, angle is created. Therefore, 12 would go here. X plus 5 would go here. And by the way, we are given the area 54. So that goes here for A. X plus 5 is considered one quantity. So therefore, we want to write this in parentheses. And now we solve. There are several ways that you can go about finishing this up. But uh, one way that is most common is that we would take this denominator here and then multiply it out on both sides. What this does is that this eliminates having to work with a fraction. From here it finishes off pretty easy. We just go ahead and distribute, then subtract and divide. Okay, let's do one last one here. Let's determine the area of this particular triangle, but in this case we're not given a base. One thing you should recognize in this particular problem is that this is the mid-segment. The mid-segment is a segment in a triangle that's connected by a midpoint on one side and a midpoint on the other. And we know these are midpoints because these two particular segments are congruent, just as these two particular segments are congruent. The property that a mid-segment has with its base is that it's always half the amount. So if this is 21, that's because it was half of whatever this was. What that means is that the base was 42. You can just simply double this amount to get this uh, base. From here, we can go ahead and apply our formula. There's step one, step two, and then multiply and divide. And that's all there is to it.